Welcome back, Ram fans. This is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at L.A. Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, Ram fans. Episode 363, Senior Bowl behind us. We're not going to get into that in this episode. We'll get into that in an episode later this week, summarizing everything we saw, everything we heard. This episode, we're going to continue our first pass through each position group with regards to the Rams. This episode, wide receivers. Wide receivers on their roster, free agent wide receivers, wide receivers in the draft, and so on. What the Rams need to do to round out this wide receiver group. Ran my first mock draft on the YouTube channel. You can check it out at youtube.com slash at LA Rams Up. That's our channel. And please subscribe. Really appreciate it. The results of that mock draft. Talisi Fuaga, the offensive tackle out of Oregon State. Man, if he dropped to 19, Rams got to be all over that. In the second round, Tevandre Sweat, the big defensive tackle out of Texas. And the third pick, Roman Wilson, the wide receiver out of Michigan. Only went three rounds. Actually did complete the third round because the mock draft database has not awarded the Rams that compensatory pick for the Raheem Morris hire. But hey, how accurate can you be after the first three picks? How accurate can you be with any of these picks, to be honest with you? But it's loads of fun. Before we get to our wide receiver talk, real quickly, episode 363, is there an interesting player who wore number 63 for the Rams? Actually, not really. I did settle on a gentleman by the name of Buck Lansford. Drafted by the Eagles in the second round of the 1955 draft, selected to the Pro Bowl in 56, named All-Pro in 1957, and then traded, along with another player, to the Los Angeles Rams for Norm Van Brocklin. That was in 1958. He was a Rams captain, and then during training camp in 1961, quit the team after being named a backup. Rams couldn't work out a trade with any other teams for three years. And by then, he was a free agent signed with the Houston Oilers in 1965, and then formally retired at the end of that month. Buck Lansford, pretty good football player, part of a pretty big trade there. Seems like there's been a lot of players that have played for the Eagles and the Rams. But that's our number 63 for our Los Angeles Rams, Alex Buck Lansford. Continuing our first pass through each position group, with regards to the 2024 draft and free agency and the receivers the Rams currently have on their roster. What is the outlook? How do we feel about this wide receiver group? And and what should the Rams be doing to make sure this group remains one of the better groups in the league, which it has been over the last couple of years? Let's first take a look at what wide receivers the Rams have drafted over recent years. We'll go back to 2011. The Rams picked two receivers in 2011 and in 2012 and in 2013. I wouldn't say they hit the jackpot in any of them. Austin Pettis, Greg Salas, Brian Quick, Chris Givens, Tavon Austin, and Stedman Bailey. Austin probably the best in the group. They did not pick a wide receiver in 2014. 2015, their only wide receiver selection was Bud Sasser. And then in 2016, Pharaoh Cooper and Mike Thomas. No, not that Mike Thomas, the other one. He ended up with the Bengals. Not sure what happened to him. He was an okay NFL receiver. Pharaoh Cooper had his moments as well. Had some bad moments in the return game for the Rams. Man, that Atlanta playoff game, Sean McVay's first year. Unfortunately, that's what I remember Pharaoh Cooper for. And then Sean McVay arrived and things improved. Cooper Cup and Josh Reynolds in 2017. Surprisingly, McVay did not draft a wide receiver in 2018 or 2019. 2020, Van Jefferson. That was an okay pick. Second round, though. 
expected a little bit more out of him. And then 2021, Tutu Atwell and Ben Skowronik, two kind of polar opposite receivers, really, right? Ben Skowronik will rock your world in the running game. Tutu Atwell, a stretch the field type of receiver. No wide receivers in 2022. And then 2023, hit the jackpot again, Puka Nakua. So we may have some recency bias in thinking that the Rams are great at drafting wide receivers. Actually, since 2018, before drafting Puka Nakua, their draft picks were Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell, and Ben Skowronik. None of those were horrible picks, but wouldn't say that we nailed them either. But then Puka Nakua in 2023, (laughs) if the Rams keep that up, they're going to be in really good shape. But who are the wide receivers currently on the roster? Pretty small group, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, Tutu Atwell, Ben Skowronik, and Xavier Smith. Demarcus Robinson, the key guy, that's a free agent. So that puts the Rams in a little bit of a bind as we head towards free agency and the NFL draft. And the reason I say that is Puka Nakua plays such a physical style and he gets banged up a lot, stays in the game for the most part, but you have to wonder if we'd rather he ran out of bounds a few times. And Cooper Cup, as great as he is, he definitely has an injury bug. Seemed to be moving at 80% speed over the second half of the season. But maybe he'll come back and be 100%. And then there's Tutu Atwell, a serviceable number three receiver, Ben Skowronik. He'll get in there sometimes, almost more of a tight end than a wide receiver, to be honest with you. And Xavier Smith, who has some return potential. Notable unrestricted free agents. Well, Mike Evans is going to cost too much. OBJ, hey, maybe he wants to come back. He'd be a decent number three, a replacement for Demarcus Robinson at the right price. Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd always liked him. I think the Rams could use a receiver like that. If you're looking for some speed, there's McCall Hardman, Josh Reynolds. Man, if that was his last game in a Lions uniform, that NFC Championship game, what a bummer. Then there's Calvin Ridley, who will probably come at an unreasonable cost. T. Higgins, another Bengal wide receiver, is available. And then there's Michael Pittman. Not sure if Pittman's really a great fit for this offense, considering what the Rams expect from their wide receivers. And had a great year, probably drove his price up. The reason I mention him, he is out of Bakersfield and Oaks Christian and USC, so maybe he'll give the Rams a SoCal discount. Still don't expect that to happen. Now, the one thing on the Rams side is this year's draft is packed with talented wide receivers. Now, the top three or four guys are going to be out of their reach. Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Rome Odunze out of Washington, Keon Coleman could slide to the Rams, 6'3", 215-pound wide receiver. Don't think he's the type of guy they're looking for, though. And then there's Brian Thomas Jr., another LSU wide receiver. So many great wide receivers coming out of that school, 6'4", 205. And then Lad McConkie out of Georgia, 6 feet, 185. And the list goes on. There's just a bunch of guys that the Rams could grab in the second or third round. And I think they very well could. Three guys that I really like for the Rams. Troy Franklin, the Oregon wide receiver, 6'2", 178. Jalen Polk, another Pac-12. Can we still say that, Pac-12? Last year, anyways, a Pac-12 wide receiver out of Washington, 6'2", 204. And Roman Wilson out of Michigan, 6 feet, 185. Let's talk about those three guys. And there's a bunch of others. We'll get into them later on in this offseason. This is our first pass through each of these position groups, just trying to get smarter so we can have intelligent discussions about these players, about potential mock drafts for the Rams moving forward. Okay, first up, Troy Franklin, out of Oregon, 6'2", 187, a little bit long and thin wide receiver. Broke out in 2022 right alongside Bo Nix. 61 receptions, 891 yards, and 9 TDs. In two games against UCLA and Washington, two solid programs, 13 receptions for 271 yards and three touchdowns. Came back in 2023, 
1,383 yards and 14 TDs. Excellent speed, really good route runner, gets really good separation. And what they say about Franklin is, is that he maintains that speed throughout every part of his route. And that's how he gets separation. That's something the Rams really value in their wide receivers. He's not a guy that's going to run through traffic, though. And we, we're used to seeing guys like Puka and Cooper Cup getting those extra yards, pummeling defenders. Both of them are really able to slip through multiple tacklers. Not sure if we're going to see that from Franklin and his blocking is nothing special as well. Next guy up, Jalen Polk, 6'2", 204. Now this guy's more of a speedster. Really good hands, really physical though, and has a really good catch radius. Tenacious running style, and he does have yards after the catch ability as opposed to Franklin. Precise route running, really shifty converting from receiver to runner. He can play inside, he can play the slot. So he's very versatile. And then there's Roman Wilson out of Michigan. Clocked at 4-3-3 in the 40 out of a two-point stance. Another guy with good ball skills. Extremely competitive. Doesn't really run through traffic like we've seen from Puka, but he will avoid tacklers. And he has excellent straight line speed as well. He's another guy that's a great breakaway threat. All three of these guys are really, but I think Polk and Wilson are more yards after catch type guys, whereas Franklin is not. Now, I could get into a bunch of other receivers, but I won't right now. We have plenty of time for that. There are probably 20 wide receivers that the Rams could consider in the 2024 draft, and they probably will, and they're going to settle on one of them. Who knows which one at this point? I wanted to focus on Polk here for a second, though. 6'2", 204, exact same size as Puka Nakua, actually one pound lighter. And if you were to summarize some of the comments on him, tenacious running style, physicality on routes, effective in the slot or on the perimeter, versatile playmaker. I could be describing Puka Nakua, couldn't I? But no, it's Jalen Polk. And remember, Jalen Polk is more of a deep threat, a speedster, but there's a lot of similarities there as well. And, of course, the biggest difference is the Rams were able to get Puka in the fifth round. Polk is going to go by the end of the second round, I'm pretty sure. So what can we conclude at this point in early February about the Rams' plans at wide receiver, the challenges they face with this position group? I don't think the Rams are going to spend profusely on this position in free agency. I think bringing back to Marcus Robinson should be the priority, but if they can't, Hey, maybe OBJ would be an option or one of those Bengal wide receivers if the price is right. But I think it's going to come down to drafting the right receiver more as insurance if something happens to one of their top two guys or as an eventual replacement for Cup, as sad as it is to say that already. I'm not convinced Cup's going to be around a lot longer. Now, it's way too early to zero in on a specific player, but you just got to love Polk and what he would do for this Rams offense. And hey, and that's true of these guys that are rated above him, but I don't think the Rams really have a shot at one of them unless they package a bunch of picks and move up for one of the top three wide receivers. But back to Polk, he's the 58th ranked player on draft tech, the seventh wide receiver, while CBS Sports has him as the 73rd ranked player and the 17th wide receiver. So I'm going to lean more on draft tech's evaluation at this point, but they're going to coalesce and eventually Polk will probably be pegged as a top 10 wide receiver that's going to go by the end of the second round. This goes to show you how many great wide receivers there are in this draft, and there are a bunch of them. And that's the other part of it. Rams could get a really good receiver in the fourth or fifth round, but there's certainly more risk if that player is going to pan out or not. You're not going to hit it like you did with Puka in the fifth round every year. Hey, and another guy to think about, Luke McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey's brother. Remember the Rams signed Fred Warner's little brother. Now along comes Luke McCaffrey, and McCaffrey is a valid NFL wide receiver. He will get drafted. Had a really big catch in the senior bowl. That would be interesting if the Rams went that way. We're going to talk about a bunch of these other receivers in another episode. I got to get Paul Walia on. He knows a lot about these guys. We'll do a much deeper dive in each of these position groups when I have Paul on board. 
So in the end, what are we looking at here? We're looking at a wide receiver group of Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell, and then a higher draft pick for the fourth wide receiver spot and to push Tutu Atwell or to replace Cup or Nakua if they get hurt. And then there's Ben Skowronik, Xavier Smith, and probably some random free agents. Now, if they can retain Robinson, it's probably going to look more like this. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Demarcus Robinson, Tutu Atwell, Ben Skowronik, pretty much everybody coming back, right? And then a late round pick, a later round pick, fifth or sixth round wide receiver to fill it out depth wise. That's my take on the wide receiver group at this point in early February. It's going to be fun. You know, a lot of us greedy fans, they want the Rams to trade up, grab one of those top wide receivers. Not sure if that's realistic, but we'd all be celebrating if that happened. But if it means we have weakened our offensive line or defensive line, or we don't have the cornerbacks to hang with some of these top high-flying offenses, we may rue that pick down the road. That's it on my wide receiver take for now. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.